Dear everyone, I'm Dr. Yimin Ho from University of Victoria. It's truly my honor to attend the 2020 RGB 92nd Vehicle Technology Conference to present our research work, which is titled Deep Q Network Based Dynamic Movement Strategy in a UAV Assisted Network. So, here comes today's syllabus. First of all, I will do a quick review of UAV communications and networks, followed by the system model for UAV assisted wireless communications. Afterwards, I will talk about the fundamental of reinforcement learning, followed by the deep Q network based UAV base station movement design. Eventually, I will present the numerical analysis of DQN-based UAV movement strategy. Finally, I will conclude this paper with future works discussed. For the review, here comes the very famous ITU model where we have three major and principal 5G and beyond used scenarios, namely EMBB, MMTC, and URLLC. So, what is on earth the relationship between the 5G and beyond networks and the UAV communications? Um, so, assume that um, UAVs can be deployed and function as uh, area based stations to help the terrestrial base stations to provide an effective complementary solution to emergency water service recovery after natural disaster or infrastructure damage as illustrated in figure two here. And for example, um, people in the west coast of the North America have been experiencing forest fire, uh, particularly during the time of summer and uh, early autumn. In that case, UAVs can be properly deployed to function as uh, forest fire civilians and also get as a cellular service recovery. Based on the review of recent published papers, we found out that one key design challenge is to determine the mood strategy for UAVs, since in the real-life situations, the environment where UAVs are deployed is highly dynamic. So it is really critical for UAVs to adjust its locations regularly to cope with varying conditions. Furthermore, utilizing Machine learning techniques for UAV communications recently has seen unprecedented growing popularity. Following the previous discussion, here comes the figure 3, illustrating a communication system model of UAV-assisted network, where we have the UAVs serve as area base stations, which can provide hotspot wireless communications to the ground user equipment, and also the Terrestrial infrastructure can provide the service to the UEs uncovered by the UAV base stations. Then, here comes the assumption in our research. First of all, UEs are assigned to the nearest base stations, and all the UEBS cells are actually deployed at the same altitude. In particular, ground UEs always move, and therefore they have a coordinate about the time. So, let's take a quick look at the signal model where we have NOS and NNOS probabilities for UAV communications as formulated in equation 1 and 2, where A and B are environment-dependent variables. Then the path loss for loss and NNOS respectively can be written as in equation 3 and 4. Eventually, we can have the equation 5 where we have the total path loss. Moreover, the signal to interference plus noise ratio, aka signal, experienced at the UE end at a distance RG from its associated UEV base station J can be expressed as an equation 6, where we have the interference from other UEV base station or ground base stations expressed in equation 7, in particular PJ here, represents the transmitter power of the GF base station. 
Therefore, the data rate of any user command can be obtained according to the Shannon Capacity Theorem. After talking about a system model, we can move to the fundamentals of reinforcement learning, which proceeds in a cycle of interactions between an agent and its environment. Moreover, the time proceeds and the environment propagates the agent to a new state. Then, the whole procedure is pretty much like a Markov decision process. Then, we just train an agent interacting with the environment to provide the feedback. Then, the agent arrives at different states by performing action leading to a reward, and the agents are actually reinforced to learn to choose the best actions based on the reward. Eventually, the agent can maximize its total reward across an episode. Um, there is a very important concept about the policy, that is the way how agent can choose its action. Furthermore, Q-learning actually allows an agent to learn and act optimally in a given environment. And the goal is to learn a behavioral rule that can maximize the reward. So the whole procedure is actually a off-policy reforms learning due to learning from actions outside the current policy. So there are two elements about Q-learning. One is Q volume and another one is Q table. The Q volume for each state and action can be found in the Q table and can be computed by equation 8. And the Q table is actually a lookup table which states the Q volume that presents the future values of actions for each state. And it's updated regularly as formulated in equation 9. However, in to solve the um, non-table issue of the Q-learning, DeepQ Network has introduced the NOS function to make it become a simple regression problem. Moreover, the experience replay of DeepQ Network can store a fixed size of samples from training data into a memory tuple. Okay, at this stage, we can introduce the UAV base station's movement strategy. So, it is actually a design of determining the positions of the UAB station at each time instant. And it serves the purpose to find the optimal positions for all UAB stations in each time slot. Moreover, it can maximize the sum data rates of users. So the whole movement strategy is formulated in equation 10, where we have constraints C1 and C2 in this equation to guarantee all the user equipment associated with the nearest UA base stations or ground base stations. In particular, M is a large number to ensure the constraint hold in any UE association conditions. C3 guarantees all the UEs associated with owning one single base station. The DeepQ network structure is illustrated in figure 4. When given the real-time locations of a set of user equipment, a reinforcement learning-based UAV-based station movement strategy is proposed to obtain the optimal real-time locations of the UAV-based stations. The random walk model is chosen as the user equipment mobility model. And the moving direction of the user equipment are uniformly distributed among left, right, forward, backward, and staying still. Moreover, the initial positions of the ground users are assumed to be fixed. And at each time instant, when ground users move or UAV base stations take action in response to the movement of the ground user. Considering the algorithm design, there are actually four critical parts, namely A, state representation, B, environment, C, actions, space, D, reward design, and E, training procedure. 
It's worth mentioning that the principle of designing the reward function is to improve the UE's instantaneous data rates, which enables the agent to receive a positive reward. When the action results in a reduction of the sum data rate of the UEs, the UV stations receive a negative reward. Therefore, the whole reward function can be expressed as in the equation 11. More particularly, about the training procedure, in each episode, a predetermined size of the mini batch experiences A are uniformly sampled to update theta using gradient DCN method to minimize the noise function as formulated in equation 12. Also, it's very critical to mention that the experience replay can improve the training efficiency by breaking the correlation between samples in order to stabilize the training. At this moment, eventually we can present the numerical analysis of the DQN-based UAV movement strategy. So in our simulations, we actually have set the carrier frequency to 2 GHz, and the maximum of the path loss is 103 dB, and the TX powers of the uv base stations and ground base stations are set to 37 dBm and 40 dBm, respectively. So the structure of the network is configured to be two input neurons in the input layer, 10 neurons in the hidden layer, and five neurons in the output layer. Also, the movement step size of the UAV base stations is configured to be one meter. Figure five further shows the user equipment distribution and their association in one time Instant, the UEs and the base stations with the same color represent the association. Now, all the UEs are actually associated with the nearest base stations. Then we can take a look at the figure 6 that illustrates the sum data rate versus the number of the training episodes. Obviously, the UE base stations are capable of carrying out their actions through iterative learning from their past experience to significantly improve the performance. As further drawn in Figure 7, the sum data rate comparison of different methods is given. It can be observed that the overall performance in 500 time instant of DBQ network outperforms the fixed locations or key means deployment strategy, and it closely follows the performance of the exhaustive search. However, considering the computation cost results in Table 1, which is obtained using Intel Core i5 processor to run the algorithm 10 times and take the average processing time. Um, so, exhaustive search as expected achieves the highest performance, but the computation complexity can be too high for real-time processing. DeepQ network is particularly critical for no latency communications and mission execution involving UAVs. Concluded this paper. First of all, a dynamic UAV base station deployment strategy for optimizing the real time performance of the wireless communication service when all UEs are moving has been proposed in our work. Moreover, a DeepQ network based algorithm has been proposed to maximize the sum data rates of the ground user equipment, a highly dynamic UAV assisted network. The proposed algorithm actually outperforms, according to our simulations, other existing dynamic deployment algorithms. A potential and possible future work can be using a multi-agent reforms learning to enable multiple UAVs to take actions while still considering their interactive impact. So here comes the reference list. Thank you so much for your attention and your time.